Hey friends, it is the Drive to School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, your host and the person being... In, I'm just talking at you for this particular podcast about the things that you will see in church this Sunday. And uh, this Sunday in church, in, in my church, we were going to have a reading about forgiveness, which um, should seem kind of on the nose for church. But here's the thing. This reading is about forgiving each other. We know that Jesus forgives us, but this is the parable of the unforgiving servant. And in this servant, there is a man who owes lots and 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 lots of money. And uh, he's about to get thrown in jail, but he begs for mercy. And the the, the king who has uh, the, the, the option to either cast him into, well, the place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth or forgive him, chooses to forgive him. And this man being forgiven of all his sins, he's walking down the road, he sees somebody who owes him just a tiny little bit of money and uh, who can't pay, so he, he yells at him and has him thrown in, uh, in, in jail. And the Lord is misple- uh, he, he's, he's mad, big mad about this. Don't do that. So when we talk about the forgiveness of sins and we look at this parable, uh, we even pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We can recognize that there's sort of two ways to approach this. The first way is that, well, because this guy was shown grace and then he didn't choose to show grace himself, he made a bad choice and he is being punished. Um, Because we have been forgiven. We just recognize that we're happy all the time. And so it's really, really easy to forgive other people who sin against us because Christians are full of the love of God. And um, here's the thing. Uh, The technical theological term for that approach is stupid. That's stupid. That's of the law. And we cannot fulfill the law. That law, however, though, has already been fulfilled in Jesus, which is sort of the point of this. After all, think about the man in the parable who is walking down the way all of a sudden, free from debtor's prison. How did he get that way? Except that all of the forgiveness, all of the freedom comes from the master's great gift of mercy. The ability to forgive others comes from, well, his debt being released. Not his person being changed, but his debt being released. See, we're still sinners. And so that means when we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, um, I can very readily recognize I need forgiveness. Uh, The law shows me my sin and I definitely need a savior. Thanks be to God that Jesus has died on the cross. And so when I pray, forgive us our trespasses, I'm not sort of like magically putting in a quarter to get the uh, forgiveness of sins Cheetos in the vending machine, but rather I'm being shown. Look, look at how he has won you your forgiveness of sins that helps you see your neighbors too. Because we have to pray, forgive us our trespasses as we, uh, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And even while we're struggling to get the words out, we're remembering that kid that we have a grudge against from the sixth grade. And I can't from my own heart just stop being a sinner. That's the whole point of needing forgiveness all the time. So instead of trying to find forgiveness in my heart where my heart needs forgiveness, I need to find forgiveness on the cross. I need to find forgiveness on the cross for my sins but I also need to find forgiveness on the cross for my neighbor's sins. You see, um, the, the, the guy who could have forgiven the other debt, it, where does that money come from? You just got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money for free because the master is merciful. You don't need to be counting pennies anymore because their forgiveness of sins is overflowing. If you want to start counting pennies and just make sure that everybody gets what they deserve, well, that's not forgiveness. That's of the law. And If you want to live that way, it's going to go bad for you too. So trying to is, well, stupid. Don't do that. We pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, recognizing my heart always needs to be pointed to forgiveness. Point me, O Lord, to your cross where you forgive my sins and where I have grudges. Help me by pointing me to your cross for my neighbor's sins too. Then I can say, Lord, let not my heart be the thing that binds people into hell. Not me, not my neighbor, not anyone. Because God doesn't want anyone in hell. That's why he forgives the debt. That's why he dies on the cross and rises again from the dead. When we start to make forgiveness all about what we can earn or how we feel, it's an all or nothing thing. Which is why Jesus can speak this way, that if we do not forgive others, neither will we be forgiven. It's not a, if we don't do this, it somehow uncrucifies Jesus. But here's the thing, either the forgiveness of sins comes from the cross or it doesn't. But when we start looking at people as if they cannot be forgiven, pretty soon that gets turned back around against us. And so in this parable where we get to see somebody being forgiven all of their sins and then wanting to live only by the law, we see how poorly it ends. But we are called to simply recognize we always need Jesus. We pray because we need our hearts to be fixed upon the cross where the forgiveness of sins is won. Pray that your sins be forgiven, but also pray that you would find your neighbor's sins on that cross too, because Jesus died for them.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>